I don't know why my bangs are doing that. Kilo, oh my gosh. Kilo! I'm not mean to my dog, don't worry. He's just very, he does no personal space and. Okay, well, he wants to be in the video too. Okay, lay down. Just lay down right there. Kilo. Do you see what I'm talking about? Well, today I'm going to be doing a little birth story video. Um, yeah, I had a really traumatic kind of birth story, so I wanted to share this for, like, you know, people that go through the, people that go through, people that are going to go through a similar thing or people that have gone through a, a similar thing and want to feel like they can relate. Like, I just watched um, Helene Ballinger. She just gave birth to her twins. Do you hear him on the floor? Watched it and I was like, oh my gosh. You'll you'll hear a part. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I feel that so much. And people made me feel like I was crazy while giving birth. And, <laughs> and I just want to be able to like... <laughs> and I just want to be able to like... Have people relate and stuff like that okay i'm talking too much i'm just gonna get into it it's really long this video is probably going to be long i'm gonna try and edit it to where it's not that long but it was a long process so i wouldn't be shocked if this video is like 30 minutes so yeah so it all started july 11th i was 41 weeks pregnant with this little munchkin she's four months now i just haven't had the time to make this video and I was going to wait for her nap time, and I put her down for a nap, and she doesn't like that idea. She wants to be awake. I literally put her down for a nap, and she's not having it. So, she's going to be in this video. Yeah. It started uh, July 11th. I was 41 weeks, and I had to get induced because she was not coming out. She's been stubborn since the day she was in my belly. And she literally would not come out. I was so pregnant. I'll add a couple photos. So I was huge and I was so tired of being pregnant. And I know you can't be more than 41 weeks, I think it is. So I was induced. Um, I was expecting her to come that day or night, but she had other plans. She was not planning on doing that. She wanted to chill in there. It was warm and she liked giving me a hard time. She's, she was gave me a hard time my whole pregnancy. I'm going to do another video on like, you know, my pros and cons of my pregnancy and a little pregnancy, like explaining how my pregnancy went because it was actually really good, but also horrible at the same time. So yeah, start off, I got to the hospital um, around, I think it was like two, two, yeah. So I had an appointment at two to go in and get induced. So I got there at two and it was like checked in and all that. I got hooked up to all the IVs. They actually messed up my IV like four times and then they had to bring someone else to do it because that nurse wasn't, she said, I'm off my game today. And of course I was like, oh great, this is gonna be a great, day, you know? Can you curse on YouTube? I don't know, I'm gonna bleep that out. Um, but yeah, they hooked me up to some IVs. They got me started on Pitocin, which was starting to get me, it's a medicine that induces labor. And they had some like fluid in this arm right here. And I had two IVs or three, two or three, but they messed it up. So I got poked like four or five times. And finally the other lady got it. They also wanted to start the fully bolt, which is like, I'll insert a photo a balloon kind of that thing and they put it into your cervix and it like blows up and helps you start contracting and open your cervix so you can give birth so they started the fully bulb around i think five five that hurt so bad some people say it doesn't and i'm really good with like i have a really high pain tolerance like a lot of things don't hurt me so this was shocking that this hurt as bad as it did. And it didn't, the balloon itself didn't hurt. It was them having to put it in. Like they, 
so first they were like do you want to use this tool which is like you know like the opening tool that they like put in they open it or do you want to try our hands our hands might hurt a little more but i forgot what they said and i was like oh you can just use your hand i don't really care oh no <laughs> no don't do that go with the tool so even the tool hurt so it goes like really really in there so beware they started the fully bowl and it didn't fall out for because sorry why am i not giving information on this so basically put the fully bulb in and then it falls out around like three or four centimeters i think it is and so you could have it in for hours you could have it in for five minutes you know it all depends on when your body gets to three or four centimeters and it was horrible i started contracting really bad and i was also in the pitocin so things were moving fast but really slow at the same time like i started contracting so 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 bad like i was in the bathroom and i just remember like hovering over like i was on the toilet and i just remember like going like this and just it's like starting to see like black like it literally like you know period cramps like but like times a thousand and i you know when you get hot and those heat flashes like that's how i was feeling i was having contractions i was like oh my gosh i'm only at three or four centimeters right now i think i don't know what it was i think it was three and i was like i like and the worst feeling is is you know it's only gonna get worse like i mean you can get the epidural but i was too afraid of getting it too early or too late so i was like when should i get it like i'm in so much pain like should i hold off but okay i'll get to that and so i was just like pan i was having like a panic attack like oh my god it's gonna get worse like it's horrible right now honestly started to die down like it only happened for like i'd say like 10 or 20 minutes like that pain and then they got that like little peanut ball thing it's like a little like blow up ball that you can put between your legs <clears throat> i laid back in down in bed and i was laying like on my side and had the ball in between my legs and that honestly helped and i just watched tv it was in pain but i mean i was in pain but it wasn't that bad after that so then around i don't i don't know really what the times are it was kind of like a crazy experience but i know around maybe 10 or 11 no 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 one one or two a.m because i was progressing so slow i was they upped my pitocin like every hour i think and just kept upping it up and i was moving so slow i wasn't they came in and checked me like every two hours and i was not dilating whatsoever I just wasn't progressing and i was so stressed out because you know when you're that pregnant you just want your baby and when you're in pain you're, you just want your baby so bad like so then it started getting bad because at 1 or 2 a.m they broke my broke my water because i my water wasn't breaking whatsoever so they broke it that didn't really hurt that bad it kind of felt like you know when they check your cervix it kind of hurts but it just felt like that and then like a gush of water literally i'd say like <clears throat> 20 30 minutes after them breaking my water i was in excruciating pain because that kick starts your labor leg and it hurts people say that inducing actually hurts more but i've only been induced i've only had one baby so i don't know but it was pretty bad and it hurt so bad after like then break my water didn't hurt but after it hurt like eight and i started contracting really bad like i remember looking at the computer because i have a little computer next to you you can see your contractions and the heartbeat see my contractions like go off the charts and it was so 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 bad so then um I was like, okay, I want to wait on the epidural because I was only like, I think four or five centimeters when they broke my water. And, and I remember thinking, I don't want to get the epidural too soon. Like the way I'm progressing, I'm probably not going to give birth till tomorrow. I don't want to get my epidural too early. And then when it's actually time to push, it's not going to work. Like that was my biggest fear. So I was trying to hold off on the epidural. I didn't really want it yet. I, so I tried doing the bath because they had a bath in the bathroom and i asked my nurse i was like can i go in the bath like i think that would help me because you know when like you're on your period and you go into the bath or something 
it helps your cramps like that warm water but you can't make it too hot because you're pregnant you can't be in like burning hot water and i like to take my baths and showers like the water is gonna burn my skin off so it didn't really help that much i was in the bath for maybe like five minutes i was literally like looking like a freaking mermaid in the water i was rolling over and over and over and getting my bra like soaking wet and my clothes i mean i didn't have any clothes on but my bra so it didn't work i literally was like i can't do this like i i'm rolling over in the water because it hurts so bad like i was trying to get my stomach underwater so that it would like ease the pain but i was so big <laughs> And the bathtub was so small that I could not get onto my stomach and the water wasn't covering my stomach at all. So that didn't help whatsoever. So I got out of the bathtub. I was like, okay, I was dripping water to the bed. I, I was dripping water like to the bed. The floor was, the floor was soaking wet, soaking wet. And I didn't care. I got back in my bed. My bed was soaking wet. I literally just stood up, didn't even grab a towel and walked to the bed and just started like, going, oh my God, I'm in so much pain. And what else did I try? I tried walking around, you know, I walked around the room and bounced on the ball, nothing helped. So then immediately it just got so bad. So, so, so bad, like the worst it was. And my stomach was just contracting so bad. And sorry, her face is like in the sun. And it just hurt so, so bad. And it was just like, I felt like it was never gonna end. So that's when I gave in. I was like, I need the epidural. I cannot do this. Like it was insane pain. And I just wanted to be comfortable. I was so stressed out. So I got my epidural at 3 a.m. So bad. And people said the epidural is the worst part. And I think it was the easiest part. Like seriously, it, it's not as bad as everyone makes. So then they came in, the anesthesiologist came in and he, dog is sniffing my phone. Kilo, please. I love you, but please just. Okay, so then the anesthesiologist came in and he put the epidural in and it just is like a quick little sting. And that feels kind of like a quick shot of lightning in your back, like literally two seconds of lightning. And, or like they say a bee sting goes up your back. It's really quick and it's worth it. It kind of did hurt really bad. I could feel the tube, you know, the little kilo, the little catheter going, what is it? Not a catheter, I don't know what it's called. The little tube that the medicine goes through in your back. I could feel it being moved in my back. I will never forget that feeling. In my lower back, I could, or I don't know where it was, but I could feel it like moving and moving around. And I was like, that's not normal. And I couldn't really feel it that much. And the anesthesiologist said, oh, well, it's not in the right spot, so we're gonna have to redo it. So that was great news. So the first time it wasn't in right, so they pulled it out and put it in a different spot and did it again. And this time it didn't hurt as bad because I knew what I was expecting. I already had the numbing medicine, so that didn't, so from the first time I had the numbing medicine, so it wasn't as bad. And I remember just holding the nurse's hand and I was like crying and I was just like in so much pain, the nurse was like, it's gonna be okay. This nurse was one of my favorite nurses. I had like two favorite nurses since I was there for a little while. You know, they had different shifts. My first nurse I loved, second nurse I loved, third one was okay. Oh no, third one was good, fourth one, mm-mm. I think she was holding my hand. I just remember the pain literally just dissolving. Like literally just going away and I couldn't feel it anymore. And I was like, this is heaven. This is amazing. <laughs> The epidural was amazing, amazing, amazing. And I recommend it 10 out of 10. And I remember just laying in bed like, okay, I can do this. It's not bad. And I just chilled. And my boyfriend was with me. And he finally went to sleep around this time. You know, we were chilling. He wanted to be up with me because I was in pain. But at this time, it was like 4 or 5 a.m. now. And we were finally just hanging out in bed. And we put on the TV, turn off the lights. And... The nurses have to come in like every 30 minutes or every, I think it was every 30 minutes to up the Pitocin. So that kept waking me up and I just remember being super uncomfortable. I just kept hitting the epidural button because you can press more medicine into your back. 
and so I didn't get like any sleep. I think maybe I slept for like 30 minutes to an hour. And around, I'd say eight or nine. So once you have the epidural in your back, you can't move, you can't go anywhere and you can't eat. So I was starving. The last time I ate was at like one before I got to the hospital. So I was so hungry. And then around eight or nine-ish, I started feeling so sick. You know, like when you don't eat and you have that emptiness feeling in your stomach, I, that's how I felt. I was super hungry. And since they broke my water so early, I got an infection. And that comes with feeling really nauseous and sick. So I literally felt like I had the freaking flu on top of contractions. It was horrible. And, and I felt like I was going to throw up. And like, I was so hot. And I was having like mild contractions at that point. Because my epidural started to kind of wear off a little bit at that point because... It was so long and I was not dilating. I think I think at this point I was at a six. So I wasn't dilating, I wasn't progressing at all. They were up, upping my Pitocin like every 30 minutes, every hour, and just nothing. So I told them like, I need some kind of medication to help my nausea and my sickness. So they gave me some Zofran, that helped, and I ended up throwing up. I threw up like twice, I think, around 10 o'clock. I threw up everywhere and then so they gave me some Zofran that was Charlotte going to the bathroom in her pants um so they gave me some Zofran and that took away the pain of my nausea and stuff and I ended up throwing up again after that like two or three more times and so yeah and then I remember sitting there because I was sitting like this on the bed like sitting up I wasn't laying down I was just throwing up into a bag and I just remember feeling like so much pressure. I don't know how to explain it. It feels honestly like a rock is sitting on your like uterus. Like you, you could feel the head, you could feel the head like sitting there. And I felt so much pressure and it kind of feels like a fist is like pushing your behind and pushing your front, you know? So I told them like, I feel a lot of pressure right now. Like literally right after I threw up, like, I was like, I, like, is this normal? Like, I wasn't feeling this before. Like, it literally felt like she was about to fall out of me. So then they're like, okay, we'll check you. I was at a nine and a half. I literally progressed from throwing up from a six to a nine and a half over, like, the span of 30 minutes. From the pressure of me throwing up so much, it pushed her down. So that was good. That was very good. So then they were like, okay, well, we're going to start getting the process ready to start pushing because you're about to be at 10 centimeters, you know, you're about to start pushing soon. So I remember I started pushing around 2.33 o'clock. It's not coming out. I was pushing, I finally dilated to a 10 and she just was not coming out. She didn't want to come out. She wasn't feeling it. She wasn't vibing with it. it started to hurt really bad because my epidural was worn off at this point like completely i was feeling everything all the contractions all the pain and so what they did is they um they were like okay we'll up the medicine a little bit so they gave me the full medicine amount they like put more medicine into your back and they gave me the full amount and that kind of like helped me for like five ten minutes and around this time they were what they do is they get some mineral oil, I think it is, or some kind of oil, and they get their hands and kind of go into your cervix and kind of like massage around it to like help mas like loosen the cervix or something. I don't know what it is, but it hurt so bad. And I felt everything. It literally felt like someone had their fist in me and was like turning my baby's head. Like that's literally what it felt like. So then she was normal normal and during that whole process she flipped she flipped face down so she was what they call sunny side up and so she wasn't face right way she wasn't breech she was head down but just turned the wrong way so that insinuated that i was gonna have back labor and front labor and at this time my epidural completely worn off completely so they were trying to get me to do some pushing positions that would like flip her so i was on my hands and knees you 
snow pushing. I was sitting up pushing. I pushed in every possible direction you can push. Okay. And her heartbeat ended up going um, down yeah. while that was happening. So I had to stop pushing for a little bit because it was starting to get into a danger zone. So I stopped pushing for I think like 10, 15 minutes. And then I went back to it and she flipped over again. So she was in the right position. So that was all good. So then we went back to pushing and she flipped over again. And at this point was the worst. I think the pain ever was. My epidural was fully gone. Like nothing I couldn't, I felt every little thing and I was pushing and I felt everything. I felt everything. And it's so frustrating while giving birth when you feel like you're giving your all to push and you're progressing nowhere. Like I literally would feel like, okay, she's about to come out with this push. Like I feel her about to come out and she's nowhere close to coming out. Like I remember asking them like, how much longer is she about to come out? And they were like, oh, I think you probably have a couple hours to go. And for a first time mom, I think they only let you push for five to six hours. Not five, four to six hours. I think you can push as a first time before it gets dangerous or something like that. They don't like you pushing for more than that. I was in excruciating pain. I told him like, I cannot do this. Like, I cannot, I, I cannot, like, I'm literally going to die. I was screaming, crying, and my nurse was honestly rude. She was so, so, so rude, so rude. And she was like acting like almost like I was making her mad by not pushing out my baby. Like I was trying my hardest and it's such a stressful situation. And she like would get mad at me if I wasn't progressing. Like, you know, like gave me no support whatsoever. Made me feel like I couldn't do it and that I was failing, you know? So that pissed me off. That really made me upset and almost made me want to just give up and be like, like, and that's the thing. And birth, you can't give up. You got to keep going. Girl, girl, what? Okay. So then, oh boy, you were so sad. Why you were so sad? So then... I remember just screaming, crying. I just remember saying, I can't do this. Like, I can't, I can't do it. Like, I give up. I can't do it. Like, I just screamed, I cannot do it. And my boyfriend was holding my hand. He said, you can do it, you know. Just keep going. Like, it's okay. And I was like, I can't. I cannot. Like, I, I can't. Like, I'm in the most pain I've ever been. And I was like, I think my epidural's worn off. I kept pushing my button every time it turned green. It turned green. I don't know, every couple, every couple minutes, every 20 minutes or something. Pushed it. Felt the medicine go through my back nothing i felt nothing from it i felt everything i know i keep saying that but i want to emphasize that i felt every little thing done so then the nurse was like okay get the anesthesiologist like she literally was like mad she's like okay she can't do it get the anesthesiologist so the anesthesiologist came in and they checked and they were like, I was like, I can't do it. I'm not pushing without something. Like, I feel everything. Like, I, I don't care. I can't do it. So I just remember screaming, crying, just like being like, this is never going to end. I'm going to be here for hours. Like, this is, like, I don't know what I'm going to do. So they, one second, let me go change her and feed her and I'll be back because she's a sad girl. And I want to make her feel better and so I can finish this video. Okay, so I'm feeding her right now. And I'll keep telling the story. So the anesthesiologist came in and was like, okay, well, we've upped it to the amount that we can up it. Um, or we could either, um, you either are going to have to do it or we can take it out and redo it. And at that point, I literally was like, I don't care. Take it on, redo it. So this is my third time getting the epidural on my back. So they did it while laying down too because I couldn't move. So I was on my side and they were putting the epidural in like that. When I got that, it literally was heaven. I felt like I could push my full potential. I was back in business, baby. And yeah, so around this time, it's probably like four I don't really know the exact times. I'm gonna add like, you know, screenshots of my text message to my family members and stuff. And it will kind of 
you know, give times and context of everything that was going on. Cause I, it was a blur, you know, when you're in that moment, it really is a blur. And I started pushing, they were literally like, I was pushing for maybe like 30, 40 minutes. While I'm editing this video, I want to add in that when I said that I was pushing for an hour or 30 minutes, that I didn't mean for the whole duration. Duration. I was pushing for an hour. This was like after like I think four, three or four hours of pushing. And then that's when I had to stop and get the epidural redone. And when I say... And when I say that I was pushing for an hour, I'm meaning like an hour after I re-got the epidural done. So don't think that I was only pushing for an hour. I was pushing for like four or five. I'm not sure. But yeah, back to the video. And I was on my hands and knees and that's the place I was most comfortable to push. Um, it felt good. It didn't hurt like when I was laying down. And they, I kept pushing and pushing. And I remember the nurses kept looking at each other, like, you know, they just were, and then they'd like whisper in the corner to each other. And it, I was kind of getting the vibe, like, okay, she's not coming out, you know, like, and the worst feeling is like, you really do feel like she's about to come out. Like I literally felt was like, okay, these couple of pushes, she's going to come out. Like she's going to be good. No, mm -mm. she did not come out. Um, so I, they, I kept trying, they kept trying this, they were like, good push, like, they, they gave me, like, the delivery team was so amazing, but my nurse was a, mm. and the delivery team was like, you're doing amazing, like, keep pushing, like, you're so strong, you're doing so good, they were like, okay, I'm gonna go discuss this with my team and create a game plan, because she isn't really coming out, and, um, I'll come back, so I was like, okay, I feel defeated yet again. So they come in like five, 10 minutes later and the head nurse, the head doctor comes in and tells me, okay, so she's stuck in your pelvic bone. And that's why it hurts so much when you're pushing and she's sunny side up. So yeah, it's, and she's like, you've been pushing for, at this point I was pushing for four or five hours. And she was like, we don't like our first time moms pushing that much, you know? And she was saying that I was losing a lot of blood, you know, and that was scary to hear. Um, she was like, you have the option. You can keep pushing, but you'll probably be here for a really long time. And, you know, you're losing a lot of blood. And that's what we're scared about is me bleeding out. And ha and since I was anemic during my, um, my pregnancy, I had to get iron um, IVs like three or four times because they said I had a potential of needing a blood transplant. And that's scary. Um, blood transplant, blood infusion, whatever it is, you know, where they have to put someone else's blood in you. And it's really scary. And so it was already like a, a thing that I knew about that could possibly happen was me possibly bleeding out or bleeding to death or really bad. Not even to be dramatic, but said that they're all so nervous with her that her heartbeat could go down and you know it could be a really scary situation but they're like we don't want to sit here and tell you that you can't keep pushing because you have that option but our best option is we should do an emergency c-section my biggest fear was having a c-section i really didn't want it i wanted to push naturally and vaginally and that was so upsetting to hear because i felt defeated that whole time and now they come in and are like you should probably do a c-section and they were like do you want some time to think about it we can leave the room and give you some time so i was like yeah so me and my boyfriend were discussing it he was like he was so scared for me and he was like i don't want anything to happen to you i don't want anything to happen to the baby like so i was just so against it like i was so afraid of it i've never had any surgery in my life and i have a really big fear of the doctors and the dentists and all that needles and stuff but i got blood work every week of my pregnancy so i was over needles at that point but i just have a big scare with that kind of stuff so it was scary to think about but in that moment they said we could get you in now like because it kind of is ruled as an emergency and 
that you could have your baby in like she'll be born in like 30 minutes 15 minutes and that was so good to hear like I was like I want to do that like I want my baby here like I've been pushing for hours and I've been in labor for two days now you know like I don't care time like I was like give me this she's, I just almost smacked her that was my hand not her so don't think I just like smacked her um I was like let's do the c-section I don't care let's do it and I was so proud of myself in that moment because I was so afraid of it but in that moment I didn't care like I really just felt something like come over me I was like let's do the c-section and in that moment I was really scared but I was like let's do it Within literally like 10 minutes, they give you these papers to sign. You know, you have to sign stuff and all that because it's a major surgery. She's sleeping in her little bassinet, so I can finish recording. Basically, you have to go in by yourself at first. Your partner can't come with you because they have to get you all prepped and stuff. And I don't know why, but yeah. So I remember them rolling me to the operating room and I was like, my my heart was like in my stomach like I was so scared and so they took me to the operating room and it's so bright like it's like white lights and just like machines everywhere wires and all this crazy stuff and the table is so small I don't think anyone talks about that the table is so small it literally is like a butcher's table like I want to put a little disclaimer. This is not to scare anybody that's getting a C-section. If you are going to get a C-section, probably don't watch this. You know, I liked going into it not knowing anything. You know, I don't like to like, I'm usually the kind of person that does research on stuff and gets myself all psyched out, but I wouldn't recommend it because I kind of had a little bit of a traumatic experience with it. I know people that have had a great experience with it and people that have had horrible experiences with it. It's all different and you know so i don't i don't want to scare anybody but this was my experience and i want to go in the little nitty gritty details to explain it because this is my birth video so i want to get it all out there so yeah so i remember them rolling me into the room i was like so scared and since i had the epidural in me um i literally like um i couldn't move so they had to like pick me up like freaking it was so embarrassing. <laughs> they had to like pick up my legs and my arms and like literally like move me to the table. Like I was literally like this and then they like, moved me to the table from my hospital bed. So then they have to give you a kind of special like epidural for um, the C-section because um, it's different, you know? So they, I forgot what they did. I think there's like three different options that they can do. Like. They, I don't, I was so out of it, so I don't want to give information and be wrong, but this is what I kind of remember. I don't know if it's right. So please, if you're a doctor watching this, even no doctors are going to watch my videos. Like, they're going to be like, girl, what the hell? Like, no doctors watch my videos. But I just want to put a little disclaimer that I don't really know what I'm talking about that much, but I don't know the exact details, but this is what happened. So it was kind of like they can put the medicine in through my epidural needle kind of medicine tube thing that's for the C-section so that they don't have to do like a whole nother needle so they did that and then they get like a little like sharp piece and they like scrape kind of against your they like cut not they don't cut you but they kind of like scrape up against your skin on your stomach to make sure you can't feel anything and i felt it i felt when they would scrape me so that means that they have to like up the medicine so they up the medicine let it sit for like five minutes scraped me again i felt it and I, I wasn't being dramatic like i know you can feel like movement but you're supposed to feel no pain and i felt it. it really felt like someone was pinching me hard as hell so then they were like okay then we're gonna do the sec second option where they take out the epidural i think and they do kind of like a needle that goes in and this is the needle that they use for c-sections and stuff and it, i think i don't know if it's a spinal tap i don't know what it is but it numbs you from the neck down instead of the you know, it's like, it's a way stronger kind of medicine that, you know, numbs you completely everywhere. Instead of just like here down, it's like down, not your head, but like neck down. So you can't feel anything. You can't feel your arms, you can't feel your hands, you can't feel your chest, nothing. They did that and they scraped me and I couldn't feel it. So that was good. So if you kind of think about it, I kind of got like four different like epidural situations, you know? 
I remember this so like faintly because they hook you up to so many IVs. Like my arms were laying on the table like this. And they were on the table and they strapped my arms down, which I don't get. Like I can't move my arms. Why are you strapping my arms down? Like I was literally strapped to bed, but I can't move. I'm literally paralyzed. What am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to go? Like, where am I gonna go? It makes zero sense. I'm putting IVs in literally probably every vein I have in my body. Like literally here and here and here and here and here. I feel like I was like freaking like, they were doing experiments on me. Like I was laying there and they were putting needles all in me and I was hooked up to all these IV bags. I don't even know half the stuff I was hooked up to. So then I remember this so faintly, like what I was saying is I was under so much medication. Like I was high out of my mind. I literally was going through it. And I just remember faintly them like on the table, like away from me, like them pulling out their little like little organizer thing of like scissors and and knives and all that stuff. And it was like, they were laying there across the table. Like, I literally felt like I was in like Dexter. Horror movie, like I was like, they're gonna cut me open, like I'm gonna die. Like, it, it, they were literally preparing it. Like they were about to like, cut me into pieces. Like, I was like, I'm in an episode of Dexter right now. Like, I'm about to get cut open, I'm about to die. Start my medicine and I'm rolling and I'm good. And then this is where everything goes downhill down 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 downhill but if you go watch colleen ballinger's birth of her twin story she explains that the anesthesia goes up here so in your chest you literally feel like you cannot breathe your lungs feel like they collapse your esophagus like what she was saying feels like it's closing like i could not take a full breath like i was laying there and i'd go to breathe and i could only breathe like halfway like i could be like and I, it stopped, like I couldn't take a full breath. It literally feel like someone was suffocating me with a pillow and I could not breathe. So I started like freaking out and I have really bad anxiety. So this was already an anxiety situation and I had a really bad panic attack. I've had panic attacks and this one is the worst one I've ever had. And I started having an insane panic attack and I was like, I cannot breathe, I cannot breathe, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna literally die here. What is wrong with me? And I just remember them making me feel like I was stupid. I don't know if they meant to, but I felt stupid. Like they were like, oh, you're fine. You're not, you're breathing fine. We're looking at your chart right now. Like your, your heart rate and all that and your oxygen, you're doing fine. Like you're, they were super nice about it. Like they weren't like mean, like, oh my God, you're fine. But like in that situation, you feel like, oh my God, I'm going to die. And these people are telling you, you're not going to die. Like you don't feel how I feel. Like I'm literally feel like I'm about to stop breathing i remember asking how long is this going to go on for like i can't breathe you know like how long is this going to continue um and they said until the end of the surgery like it, nothing's going to change you know it's going to be the same i remember being like i cannot sit here for an hour not being able to breathe like i'm going to die here on this table on this butcher's table with my arms strapped to the bed i'm about to die like this really is an episode of Dexter, but he doesn't have to come open. I'm just going to die here from freaking being able to not breathe. I remember after that, I really don't remember what happened. You're so sedated that you really, you feel like you're there, but you feel like you're like living outside of your body. Like, you know, like it's so weird. Like I literally felt like, you know that Hannah Montana scene where like she's like in the bed and she can like hear like people talking and stuff, but she's not like, she's not in her body. That's really how I felt. Like I could hear the talking, I could hear the beeping of the machines, like I could hear everything, but I don't remember it and I don't, like it's all such a blur, like I literally probably remember like five minutes of the surgery, like in the beginning at least. I remember the end, but at this point I don't really remember anything. I don't remember my boyfriend coming in, I don't remember him coming in, but he remembers telling me that I was laying on the table and he said I literally looked dead. Like my face was pale as a ghost. My eyes were like rolling to the back of my head. Like I was literally like this. And I literally was looked at, he said. And every time I talk, it was the weirdest thing. When I was talking, I literally felt like I was making full sentences. Like I was like, I'm talking clear and these people cannot hear me. And my boyfriend, Logan, he told me that when I was talking, you couldn't hear anything. I was like, blah, blah, blah. like I was mumbling and you couldn't hear anything. But in that situation, I felt like I was talking so clearly. And I got so angry when people weren't hearing me. Like, I'd be like, I can't breathe. Or that that hurts. Or, I mean, obviously, Kayla, it's going to hurt. You're, like, being cut open. But 
Like, I remember being like, when is it going to be over? Like, all this kind of stuff. And they just kept going, huh? Huh? What are you saying? Kill it. What are you saying? What? Like, but I remember them getting that little oxygen mask and putting it over my nose to kind of help me breathe because I was saying I can't breathe. And I guess they were kind of doing it as like a mental kind of thing just to make me feel like I breathe. But I honestly feel like they were suffocating me more with this. Like I remember kept trying to, okay, I remember wanting it off my face and I kept saying, get it off, get it off, get it off. And the lady was holding it on me. Obviously I'm mumbling, so she can't hear me and I can't move. I can't take it off me, you know? So I kind of could just move my head. That's all I could move. And I kept going like this every time she would put it on my face and she was like, you don't, you know, you don't like it. And I was like, no, no, please take it off. Like it is making me not be able to breathe even more. So they took that off. I remember them being like, okay, she's out. And them going to hold her over the thing. And they started unclipping because you have this big curtain over you. And they started unclipping the curtain to like see. And I was scared that they were going to show my stomach. I didn't want to see my stomach. Like I would have had a heart attack seeing my stomach cut open like that. So I was like, oh no, don't show me. And they're like, oh, you don't want to see your baby? I was like, oh no, I do, I do, but don't don't show me my stomach. So then they held her over the thing and I saw her and like everything was complete in that situation. Like literally, I cannot describe that feeling to anybody, you know? And you hear it, like when you see your baby for the first time, it's such a different, such an amazing feeling. And it really is. Like at that moment, I was like, nothing matters. I don't care. Like cut me open a thousand times i don't care like i would go through this again for you you know i remember hearing her cry and it was such a different cry it wasn't a like it doesn't sound like an old baby cry it just sounds like your baby's cry it was the weirdest feeling and i remember just hearing her cry and i don't really remember it and i just remember bawling like when i saw her just i remember bawling and crying and just like being like crying of like happiness like oh my gosh you know my baby's here so then my boyfriend went to go like, you know, they like have her like in the little corner of the room and they like clean her off and stuff while you're getting like stitched up and stuff. So I was like, can you go like be with her? I want you to go like, you know, make sure she's okay and everything. I don't really remember anything between that. I remember him kind of helping her. And then I remember waking not waking up but like being more alert and i could feel them moving in my stomach and it's the weirdest grossest most uncomfortable feeling and it hurts too kind of like it feels like someone's like pushing in you like that and they're like pushing your organs it feels like and it just it was very uncomfy and my boyfriend also told me that he accidentally looked like to the side of the table besides the curtain he said he saw my organs like literally like all on the table and then I remember them just stitching me up and I was there for a while. And at this moment, I was just so happy. Like, I didn't care that they were stitching my body up, you know. I was so fine. I was so good. Like, it was amazing. And then he, they got her wrapped up in the blanket and he brought her over. And I just got to watch her and, like, look at her. And I'll insert a video. I'll insert a couple of videos of my C-section and stuff like that. I remember just being like, I want to hold you so bad. But I couldn't. I was on the table you know like so yeah so then they got me all stitched up and they moved me back to the the hostel bed and they gave me her and i just remember holding her for the first time so they removed me to the recovery room it's like this little like room kind of thing and you just sit there and they monitor you and i will never forget so after c-section they have to come every five minutes or every i think it's every five minutes and then eventually every 10 minutes and every 15 minutes and they have to push on your stomach, like literally like this. And it feels like they're, ugh. like, it's like my boyfriend and the nurse, like, ugh, when it happened. And to push like the blood and all that kind of stuff. And I think to push everything back in place and all that kind of, I don't know what it's for, but it hurts so bad. And I go into the, the postpartum room and that's where I'll be staying for a couple days. And then I was there for, I think like four or five days. Cause when you have a C-section, it's more you know you have to stay there longer so they can monitor your body and all that and yeah that's my birth story you know it was kind of traumatic and as a first time mom you don't know what to expect and every birth experience is different my next birth experience could be different you know you never know so i don't want this to scare anybody or anything like that if you want me to do a recovery video like explaining how i recovered and um my days in the hospital after giving birth and all that kind of stuff i will do a video on that 
Um, I'm also thinking about doing a video on my pregnancy, like I was saying earlier, just to help some mamas out, you know, that are pregnant and give them some tips and all that. So, yeah. Um, like this video, give it a thumbs up, you know, give me a follow, subscribe, I think it is. Um, and yeah, um, I'm gonna link my socials down below, so comment on my Instagram, anything, send me some ideas that you want me to do. I'm going to be posting Instagram stories like asking, do you want me to do this video, this video, and you can like do a little poll on it. Um, I really want to start getting into YouTube. I've always loved YouTube, you know, I've always wanted to be a YouTuber, but I really want to start getting into it now and kind of, you know, vlog my life and all that fun stuff. So yeah, if you want more of that, follow me and subscribe and yeah. Bye.